when you released the Strong Island in New School, what I know the song obviously has become iconic now. It's been used in the Strong Island movie. It's been sampled. It's been all these different things. So when you guys were first putting it out and the reaction started going, how did that shape you going into like making the rest of the album, the rest of doing damage? Well, the feeling that we had gotten from that song and when Red Alert first went ahead and spun it and we realized, you know, wow, this is catching, this is catching. It started to drive us more towards, okay, you know what? We're from Central Iceland. We're from Long Island. Um, as everything we started doing after that song with it playing on the radio, we started getting more confident in the kind of music we were making. Um, as we would finish like certain singles, certain DJs in different cities would pick it up off the album and then we would start to realize, man, people are liking different things off of this album. And it, it, it made us record harder and more intense. It really, really, to be honest with you, it made us pay attention to what it was that we felt like people had wanted. We felt like, you know, they wanted beats. We grew up and some of the best times in Long Island was the parties really paying attention to the fact that going through certain eras of hip hop, all of the songs came with great dances. And all night was a great time. So we, we stuck with those things as a group. And we always turned around and was like, you know what? One thing people want is a great beat and they want some lyrics, you know? And, and through the years, you know, we stuck with that. And we, that's, that's JVC. The formula for us is very simple. We don't have a lot of images and stuff like that. Um, the label, you know, when the label turns around and says, you know, these are nice guys, you know, you're coming into Long Island now as a label to say, hey, I gave your kids a contract the other night in the Bronx. You, now you need to come up to Long Island in car service and meet our parents and explain to them what this whole thing is. Gotcha. That's where we, you know, that's where we said as JVC, you know, our, our chemistry, somebody said, you know, I think you guys are talented enough to, to make it and go all the way. Hey, well, we just got out of high school and just started the first year of college. You need to go on, uh, you need to come talk to our parents. Like really 18 don't let you run the house and make a decision that you can just leave. You know, so um, the labels came up, spoke to the parents and stuff. And I mean, you know, things, it's what it is. But I credit, I credit B-Boy Records for a lot of things, though, because I'll be honest with you. In the world of being thankful, there wouldn't be a Strong Island or a Doing Damage album or any opportunities of intensity if they didn't put that record out. In all honesty, we're, we're, we're lucky that they decided to do more than just a single with us and take the time, regardless of how crooked anybody felt they were, to listen to what else we had. Because we did shop that album to many of labels. Many of labels came back after to turn around and say, hey man, I wish I would have known when y'all had that song out. Now you knew. You could have, it's the same thing we were talking about. You know, you could have found that out in a meeting that you could have had, but the world was caught up in Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. Staten Island wasn't even recognized at that time. They were just recognized for the four seven Ds. But again, Long Island was, oh, you're from Long Island. Like, well, what, what are we supposed to do with a group from Long Island? Right. When we were searching management. Big respect to Patrick Moxie and uh, Neil Greenwich, I think Neil, Neil and those guys down at Empire Man at the time. The only two groups that they had was JVC Force and Gangstar. They gave us a shot. It was from meeting these people in Strong Island making noise and, you know, somebody like, you know, um, those guys down there saying, hey, you know what? We'll, we'll manage you guys. But we went to several manager, management companies, like all in Manhattan and all, and they were like, what can we do with a Long Island group? 
Yeah. And it's so crazy yeah. that people forget how anti outside of Manhattan and Brooklyn and people were like, they looked at, I remember even early on Queens got looked at bad. People didn't like Yonkers. People didn't like Long Island. It was crazy when I would hear these stories and I better understood the politics of getting on early in the game. It was, it was mind blowing to me. Jada gets in the locks to me, you know, they always been like, to me, like one of the wickedest rap groups in the game. You know, what's funny about me as an artist, man, is like, I listen to hip hop. I listen to songs like Pharrell Monk. And I listen to the MC, the most deaf, black on both sides. Yeah, I listen to songs and albums of people that I feel like, you know, like their rap skill is like absolutely like phenomenal. Um, and I can normally, as an artist, I can normally find that like within like, you know, the conscious music and, and, and also the hardcore music. I love, love, love the hardcore music, like a boom bap, like the locks to me, like, you know, they've always like delivered. I always knew in the back of my head when they were coming out, you weren't going to be able to deny Yonkers. You weren't going to be able to deny a lot of places anymore. Philadelphia. You know, the best talent comes out of the street. And no matter what a label turns around and wants to say, if you made the people decide, the people wouldn't turn around and buy into half the stuff that's sitting on the radio. There it is. <laughs> They wouldn't. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not bashing. You know, any artists that that play on the radio or anything because I like a lot of music. It's part of loving music. It's just that um, when it comes to the people, you know, there's more hardcore hip hop heads out there than you may think. It's just the way that radio was controlled. But if we had our ways, it'll be a whole different playlist on the radio day after day. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.